under the rules of the discipline of Islam, as I thought it to be at the time, it was easy to figure out what to do during this unholy day season. Even as I moved on from that, and I started to look at all things religious and all things uh, spiritual as something that man had created, maybe even out of psychological necessity. But I began to get into mentalism and the belief that, you know, the mind was all powerful. And then it was really futile to even consider the holidays. Other than that, people were doing something to make themselves feel good. They didn't know any better. They didn't know the history of it. Now, you can imagine I got into uh, uh, Pan-Africanism, uh, hidden truths, African-American history, very deep, very deeply. Around 1988, I was in high school and it was a very big thing in, uh, believe it or not, I know to the young nephews, you know, when y'all have heard me say this, I know it's got to be hard to believe, but rap music was teaching us a lot about and when I say us, I mean the young black teenagers who were the primary listeners at one point in time. You know, it was it, it was being used to indoctrinate us into a, a, you know several different belief systems. But as far as what the devil meant for bad and God turned around for good, it was making some of us start to look toward the higher things and try to be higher minded and not follow the crowd as much. Okay, can we agree on that? Again, we know what the boule and the powers that be, we know what the Illuminati was intending. Okay, it was a bait and switch program, even using the native tongues and you know all of the conscious rappers, even the well-intended and good-intended conscious rappers of that time. You can look at their album covers and you can tell that they, they too were deceived. I looked at um, uh, Lakim Shabazz, uh, Black is Back, which was one of my jams. I liked that. I believe that was a flavor unit cut. Uh, and, you know, like Kim Shabazz, album cover is laden with the images that we know now show and prove that he was deceived into believing that he needed to go back to Egypt in order to find himself or in order to get in touch with, quote unquote, God or his place in God. Okay. We went through that belief system in the 80s. And then it... it solidified itself a little in the 90s when you had this movement of like public enemy okay. some of you now are familiar with professor griff from doing videos on youtube talking about the illuminati i'm familiar with professor griff from his time with public enemy first and foremost and at, at him being the one who supposedly you know well he spoke out and he said some things against the Jews that run the music business. Or he said some things that they took the wrong way, that they took the right way, and put pressure, you know, of course, the Zionists in the business put pressure on the group that they were puppeting in the first place. I've heard some things about Chuck D. I don't want to repeat. Okay? But that they all, you know, got to do the same thing that business to get ahead and get of status and Chuck D is of status Flavor Flav we know what Flavor Flav had to do to get a couple of pennies and coins off of all of that knowledge of self that they you know allowed for him, he and his group to pour out primarily to the young black youth at first and then it called wildfire I remember hearing the statistic that 90% uh, of public enemy sales at one point in time was to white kids because at that point in time you know there there was a lot of things going on in society but hip-hop had bridged this cultural gap like never before and I mean it had been going on since run DMC and, 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 and walked this way okay that bridge had been uh, created and again I'm not saying that it was there by the devil's by the devil's purposes for any 
double or good intention. The bridge was there because they wanted to bring black kids over to the satanic messages in rock and roll music and to the blatant satanic messages in rock and roll music. Okay, because it had to be hidden by the songwriter's secret because of the strong sense of religion in the black household, especially because of grandma and the elders in them instilling in the, in the generations that followed to go to church, to stay in church, to stay in your Bible. So because of that force in the household, it was difficult to get young black teenagers to turn to the satanic messages that would be more blatantly found in what you would call your hard rock or your heavy metal. So now, once that, once that turn was made, or once that blend was made, okay, you know, Public Enemy helped to make that blend. Now it's a total blend, you know, it's a total blend. Okay, and, and unity is one thing, but to homogenize everybody is something different. Unity is, yeah, you can be yourself and I can be myself, but we agree to come together against any entity keeping us from being ourselves, keeping us from worshiping as we want to worship or whatever the case may be. That's unity. But what we see now is like this, uh, it's a, you know, you can't beat them so you better join them mentality where everyone's kind of dressing the same, talking the same, the same slang. It's not unity. It's a blending in and a homogenization because the devil's trying to create this perfect spread, if you will, in his ninja, in his Cuisinart. He's blending together this perfect spread, this even spread that fits all. Old, young, male, female, black man, white man, Chinese man. And he wants everybody to be able to blend into this spread. Now, the mixing up of things, the devil throwing everything into the pot, New York being the melting pot, that's part of his plot to create a one world order. But what is a one world order a copy of? Remember, he does nothing creative. So this concept of everyone as one is not his concept originally. Can we, can we say that? Can we agree upon that? This concept of we're all one, we're all in agreement is supposed to be a concept that the body of Christ holds the copyrights to. So now as I moved on to the Hebraic phase, again, just like in the so-called Islamic phase or stage, it was simple. You abstain. I don't have nothing to do with none of y'all, nothing you doing. It's all devilish and pagan and it's gonna send you to hell. I don't want to see no tree. Don't wish me happy nothing. Don't give me a spoonful of cranberry sauce. Don't you even let it smell like greens in this house. And expect for me to have a smile on my face. I was young, as are some of you. And I was inexperienced in this walk, as are some of you. And that's okay. Hey, because we all start off as baby bear squares in this thing. Some of us take longer to mature than others. But experience is the best teacher. And as I grew 
I had to learn how to forget the tradition, but remember the people. At the same time, otherwise you're doing something self-serving. And, you know, the pat on your back for that will be the blessing that you'll be deserving. Let's look in the book. Transcend the traditions, all of them, especially when they put you in the high seat of high-mindedness and judgment. It is a tradition, a pharisaic tradition. Uh, to come down on folks because they're not worshiping by the book the way you is. By your interpretation. And you may not come down on them verbally. But if you come down on them in your heart, you've done it. If you come down on them in your mind, you've done it. Just as Jesus said, if you look upon a woman with lust to fornicate after her, it's just like you did it. Now, let's go to the book. Love's off. Luke 10. Now, are you in service? In other words, are you in the service of the Lord? Are you serving? So who do you serve? You serve the Lord's children? I'm just, I'm just asking the question. So therefore, if you're in the job of service, then you would be as one sent out like a sheep among wolves. You would be as one like Messiah sent out then, right? So, so you're being sent out every day. You have a battlefield of ministry every day that you walk on every day. That battlefield is not always hostile and volatile because we fight the good fight of faith and our weapons are not carnal. Okay, we don't fight the same way the world fights. So because of this, when you're out on that battlefield that is your life, that is your world, wherever that is, from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, that's your world. That's the battlefield that the Father has given you. How are you serving on that battlefield? Now, uh, now uh, again, that's between you and the Father. But just be sure that you're not self-serving on that battlefield. There's service, self-service, and lip service. Service is when you're actually helping the children of God, the lost. That means you have to come out of some comfortable conditions and positions and step down oftentimes into the muck and the mire where unfortunately a lot of our brothers and sisters can be found and sometimes have found themselves bound and tied down. And so you have to be able to step out of your own personal comfort space because for some of us it's comfortable to isolate. For some of us it's comfortable to not have to um, show ourselves friendly and deal with people who don't believe as we believe. What about the Messiah, the way of the Messiah? Did he deal with people who did not believe as he believed? Why? To help them to believe. He said, I've come for the lost sheep. So where do you find the people that are lost, baby? They're lost into doing and believing and having faith in the things of this world. Chapter 10, the mission of the 70 men. We imagine them to be men again. But let's look. Chapter 10, Mission of the Seventy. It's when Jesus Christ sent out, you know, he ordained and sent out ministers two by two. And he gave them some basic instructions. And one of those instructions may be a bit curious. Let's, let's see. Chapter 10, the book of Luke. Luke. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them 
two and two before his face into every city and place whether he himself would come. So he's already putting them in his own shoes. They are to walk in his shoes. They are to do as he would do. So therefore he's telling them to do as he would do. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great. It's a lot of work to be done, but the laborers are few. It's a few people that want to do it. Actually get out there and get into it. I suppose when an armchair quarterback this thing here, that's fine. That's fine. You're, you know, you're working out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Excellent. Watch out and make room for those who are willing to take on others as well. And the lost at that. Okay. There's plenty to do. The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. They knew where to go. They had the Holy Spirit as their GPS. Carry neither purse nor script nor shoes and salute no man by the way. In other words, being conspicuous, stay focused on your grizzly and get busy. Don't worry about different things because you're going to pick up things along the way. Let's continue. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, peace be to this house. Whatsoever house ye enter, because as a missionary, you're going to enter into homes of people who don't believe as you believe. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall return to you again. If they are ready to receive you graciously, you'll know by the spirit. And if someone is ready to receive you graciously, then you extend the same grace unto them. Let's continue. Regardless of this, that, and the third. This is the word. Again, what is this, that, and the third? We, according to the word. They are in alignment with this word. Let's read. Let's read what it says. And in the same house remain. So now, so now your argument can be, well, you know, I go over there to my brother's house and, you know, we fell out 10 years ago and there still ain't no peace between us and I can just feel it in my spirit. So no, I can't abide there and I can't eat there. Well, okay. Overstood. And you think that's good, but overstood. I got you. What would Jesus do? But I got you. He said, before you even put your sacrifice on the altar, go and take care of that business. But let's continue. So before you receive a blessing, but because again, you're not sacrificing to receive the blessing, but it's part of the way that it works, baby. Because God is faithful. He is the only faithful employer. Yet he's the one that you trust the least. Let's continue. Yeah, you trust, you know, you trust that where you work every Friday, they're going to kick you down. When you ask the Father for something, or when you do what you're supposed to do by the Word, and the Word promises you something after you've done what you're supposed to do, you don't even trust that you're going to get that. But you trust that that great corporation is going to keep paying you every Friday, like they say. You trust their Word. Whose report will you believe? So now, and here's the Word right here. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. A lot of meat right there. Let's break it down. You know, I've lived this lifestyle. That's why I can tell you about it. Tell you, I was the one. And I'm telling you, you know, it's less stressful to not deal with it at all. Let's tell the truth. 
it's less of a challenge. I ain't dealing with it at all. It's challenging to figure out how to go and be around them and smile and whatnot. Stand your ground and say, oh, well, you know, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Or we, you know, I don't celebrate Christmas, but I just wanted to come and see uh, little Nay Nay. I just want to sit down and break bread with uh, Cousin Ronnie. I ain't seen him since he got out. We'll never know where to find him. I know he's going to be over grandma's and aunties for that plate. Why would Jesus Christ tell them to eat whatever is set down before them? He is a Israelite. What if they sat down pork before them? Isn't he telling them to do something just as he himself would do it? Or is he giving them different rules than what he himself would do? Why is he saying this? And again, don't you misconstrue it. Lips that touch swine and never touch mine. I don't dig a pig. Pork on my fork, strictly fish on my dish. All that good stuff. And thank goodness I've never been in this particular predicament where someone sat down something before for me. Uh, some I, you know, I found a well, one time I was with uh, some friends from Louisiana on a missionary tip, and I did uh, partake of the gumbo. I took a I took a taste of the gumbo. Because it was very obvious that it would be insulting if I did not. But more importantly, because the Father brought back to my remembrance what it said here in chapter 10. So those times may come to test your flesh. It's a test of your flesh, baby. You tame the flesh by going against it. It feels good in your flesh. Come on now. It feels good in your flesh not to have to figure out how to balance out this mess. It feels good in your flesh to pick either being in the world or of the world. But not doing like Messiah said, you have to be in the world, but not of it. That's how you represent. That's how you shine the light in the darkness. Okay, we're not going to carry on with this. But let's just finish up all the way to the return of the 70. Let's go ahead and see that what he told them gave them victory. Listen to what the Lord tells you. So it said, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Now again, the father above, the true and loving God, the God of love, is not going to set you up and put you in a predicament, in a position where you're going to have to do things that will harm you. Necessarily. I mean, you know, warfare can be dangerous, but... Again, this is part of the healing process and the fellowship process, which you find all throughout the book. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 10 and, and, and 20 seconds. No, 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 no. Let's, let's, let's finish this part and then let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 27. Okay, now, so now it says, go not from house to house. That means abide there with them. Another thing the Lord is showing you, he's trying to teach you how to get along with people who do not rock like you rock. Because the body of Christ is supposed to be a worldwide thing. It's what the new world order is copying. There are supposed to be people from every walk of life and every climate and every country. Every color and creed. But we have been sectioned off mostly by the fallen angels who knew to use the power of divide and conquer. And they separate man off. They give this area and region these traditions and these demons 
to keep those traditions. And then they do this region and area differently and use these demons to control and keep those religions and to keep that people enslaved. All based on the same divide and conquer principle or fear mongering tactic, pitting one side against the other. Like they say, playing both sides against the middle. Lucifer is in the middle, playing both sides a little. Let's let's see. So now, and it, and into so he's saying to learn how to deal where you are. To so go not from house to house. Deal where you are. That's where he puts you. Deal in that circle and in that universe. Then you will be able to expand beyond that. Then your overstanding, your understanding can expand beyond that into overstanding and understanding. Something gleaned from experience. Not from thought or opinion, but from trial and error. Practical application. Let's continue. And into whatsoever city ye enter and they receive you. Again, remember, they left certain cities. Jesus Christ and the disciples left because they said, there's too much unbelief in this place. We got to go. So you can do as he did. Again, if you go into a place, now, now, if, now, shame on you. If you know that your loved ones is practicing the pagan things and Truly unbelievers too. And you don't do nothing about it. Aren't they the lost? Again. Yes, a man's foes will be of his own household. But you're going to have more foes outside of your household. Okay? Jesus Christ went among the people. The same people who betrayed him in the end. But he got out there and he was among them. So, you have to get out there. Get out there and do what? Are you in service? Or are you in self-service? Or are you in lip service? Every opportunity that you have to minister, you are supposed to. And again, you have to be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. You know, my mama can tell you that I have been uh, abstaining and not participating since I was 18 years old. And it's just taken me since I've begun to understand more about the way and overstand more about the way and understand more about the way to realize that that was not the way. It was not the way to be MIA every holiday. That wasn't, that wasn't what was up. Not for me. That's not what I should have done. Knowing my role and place and position. In authority. By the power and authority. Of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the will of the Father. He gave me something to give. So it's not right for me to withhold that. Even if all I can give. In those moments. Is love rather than instruction. There was times in which you would think that Jesus Christ would have offered some uh, high and lofty or, or some, uh, some high concept as an answer. And sometimes the answer was much simpler. As we will read, let's, let's continue and read. Let's uh, go back to chapter 10, verse 7 at the end, which says, And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. Now, this is about evangelism, part of ministry, part of fivefold gifts that we operate in here. Now, Again, don't go from house to house looking for a plate 
Don't go from house to house trying to find the most comfortable place to service because you're probably not in the place that you're most needed. Jesus Christ said a physician comes to heal the sick. He said he came for the lost sheep. Let's continue. Verse 9, taking it right out the book. And heal the sick that are therein, and say unto them, The kingdom of God has come near unto you. But into whatsoever city ye enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, Even the very dust of your city which cleaveth on us we do wipe off against you notwithstanding. Be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come near unto you. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, hmm, which are exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down to hell. Interesting. He that heareth you, heareth me, and he that despiseth you, despiseth me, and he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. Now, the return of the 70. Now, now, before we go into the return of the 70. So now, you have to be able to say, again, the example here is that you went in to the city you went in to the situation okay this is on a this is on a again a ministerial evangelistic journey which is what we should be on all of the time so these rules always apply And you have to know that like the blood is off your hands, the dust is off your shoe. And you did what you were supposed to do. And they, they didn't receive you. Now, if that's the case, then you're in line with the book. Carry on. But if that's not the case, you know it and God knows it better. So now, Let's see what happened after, after the 70 returned and the advice that Messiah gave them. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling, as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not don't be geeked about that, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. In that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, he was so happy that they went out among the people, the sick, and ministered to them. Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes to be childlike to receive certain things concerning this walk because again your intelligent thought or intelligent talk is not always going to serve you when you're serving the father you have to pay attention to the lessons that he teaches you through experience and most importantly you have to check everything that you do and you say and you believe against the word and what it says concerning it and most the most challenging part of that sometimes can be the WWJD. What would Jesus do walking in the way of Messiah? What would Messiah do in these situations? And there were times in which he showed a strong hand and there were times in which he showed love and compassion. Because he knew he was dealing with a lost people. Let's continue. Now. It's a, you know, 
thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them now here it is how to inherit eternal life verse 25 and behold a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him saying this means th this lawyer a master of words and word play and how to catch you up in something you're trying to say he was tempting him meaning he was provoking him, testing him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit e eternal life? Jesus said unto him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. Remember when Christ was asked what was the greatest commandment? Again, love thy neighbor as thyself. So we have to be able to put ourselves in positions where we can help and minister to our brothers and sisters, especially when they're lost. And especially when it's not comfortable for us to be there. Especially. Oftentimes Messiah was somewhere where he had to dip. He had to dip a couple times. Okay? And get get ghost, literally. In the wind. So it's it's a challenging thing. But it is indeed part of what we have to do. And that's to deal with folks from where they are. And that's okay. It took me a long time to realize that the Lord was not as impressed with my self-sacrifice as I thought he would be. Because it was more comfortable to me. He was more impressed with me when he found that I labored to seek him for the right words to be present among the clan, among the family, among the tribe, to speak my mind in love and to still be among them to show my care and concern for them as the lost without making them feel some type of way without feeling lofty or higher than and without making them feel lower than that's difficult but it's not impossible for a godly man which is what we're all striving to be and we strive to get closer and closer to that every day so let's continue to hate the festivals and traditions and the customs but not the people who are lost because of them. Amos 5 and 21. We separate sometimes to demonstrate hate sometimes. So you can separate from the traditions. You can separate from the pagan things. But don't separate from the people and the love that you should have for them. In Matthew 26 verse 17. Jesus celebrates the Passover with his friends. In John chapter 12, verse 1, Jesus has dinner with Lazarus and his friends six days before Passover. And we know that Jesus Christ in Matthew 26 and 17, uh, Mark 14 and 12, John 13 and 1, and Luke 22 and 7, had a meal with his friends to celebrate the victory 
that the Father made manifest in Jesus Christ, but also out of his love for them and to show his fellowship and oneness with them. We have to remember that Jesus Christ went among the lost to demonstrate his love for them. It was not a comfortable place for one who was perfect to be among the imperfect, but it was out of his love that he put himself uh, in their circles so that they could have access to him. And again, we have to learn how to do the same thing while standing on what we believe at the same time. Jesus' example concerning laws and traditions is that he was not bound by either one. Mark uh, chapter 7 and verse 13 tells us that. But let's read it. Let's, let's read Mark chapter 7 and then we are going to read uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 7 to close. Let's see. Let's, let's just start from chapter 7, verse 1. Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, unwashing hands, they found fault. Because this was against the law. No way around the fact that that was against the law. For the Pharisees and all their Jews, excuse me, for the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. Now, again, now the Bible just tells us that, that this was a tradition, so now we would have to look back through the laws and see if it is specifically stated. But I know the separation between clean and unclean was a very serious thing. Uh, especially in mankind's infancy and when mankind was immature in the spirit and had to be uh, governed more like a toddler had to be governed. When Jesus Christ came on the scene, he challenged man to reach a spiritual maturity that was not bound by the traditions of the elders nor bound by the misinterpretations or the bondage of the misinterpretation of the law. Okay, which had gotten totally misconstrued because those whose job it was to render the law unto the people had become corrupted. And it was so in his day. So what do you think it is today? So how do you think then if we can take the word of those who have gotten their information from these same Pharisees and scribes, the Zionists of today or the Jewish leadership of today, that by and large uh, uh, govern and uh, uh, teach the way of the tradition of the law and so we have to get it from them or from our interpretation of the scripture and if we take our interpretation of the scripture from Genesis all the way to Revelation and we add it all together rightly dividing the word of truth showing ourselves to be a workman who need not be ashamed then we can totally understand that Jesus Christ was not coming to take away the law but to fulfill it much like one fulfills a prescription much like one fulfills a prophecy. The prophecy was fulfilled when the word was made flesh and walked the earth and gave mankind the way. Now, once that was given to mankind, then mankind had more responsibility than the robotic and automatic practice of tradition or custom, which is what the law had become wrapped in. So because of this, the Father gave something that mankind could see as an example. The walking and talking manifestation of what is meant by the law and the word of God. Was given to us by the example of the Messiah. So we follow his example. Not our own high-minded and lofty ideas of what it means to be sanctified in God's eyes or what God would consider more holy of us to do. When we're told through and through what the most important commandment, the most important thing to obey is, and obedience is better than sacrifice. We're taught that the most important thing to obey is to love thy neighbor as thyself. And if you yourself were in a world of confusion, you would want someone to fellowship with you, to befriend you, to show you some love and some concern, and to maybe offer you some conversation that may help lead to salvation. Every soul wants salvation. 
every soul that is not under uh, full possession of the adversary wants salvation and cries out for it in many different ways. For some folks, the best way they knew how to cry out for it was to invite you by. And I ain't just talking about on the holidays. I'm talking about all the days. This is the way that we have to operate. 365, 366 on leap year. God doesn't get it wrong, but we do. Sometimes we get it wrong. That's why we need each other. Iron sharpens iron. That's why we need to take the examples and the advice and the counsel of those who have experience. Not that it will always be the proof of truth, but more often than not, you can count on experience to give you an idea of where you're headed. So now if you see uh, your loved ones in a particular state that you know is not good for their soul and you do nothing about it, again, you can just stay at home and pray for them. But the seven spirits of Isaiah, from Isaiah 11 and two, include the spirit of counsel, right along with the spirit of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You have knowledge about history and different things and facts or figures concerning the history of certain things, but you have to have wisdom. Wisdom is what do I do with this knowledge? That gives you understanding. And so from knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, we should have also counsel. When you have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, then you have something that is worth more than precious jewels. And so rather than to be like the kings of the earth, Psalm 2 and 2 of this world, and covet your precious jewels, play the rest of the world for fools, you should share what you have the best way you can. Till all the blood is off your hand. Now, a, a clarification. Now, when I was in Atlanta in 2013, I was on a ministerial mission there with a brother from Louisiana, a guy named Wacko. Uh, he was on the song, Nolia Clap. And his buddy, Magnolia Chop, joined us partway through that. And I don't recall what the, uh, there was no occasion. It was just the fact that they had all got together and met up down there in Atlanta. So they wanted a taste of home. And they were cooking for everyone in the household, which I was a member. Now again, I don't like shrimp. And uh, I tasted that gumbo, again, out of respect for them offering it to me, but also out of remembrance for what the scripture said. Eat whatever is set before you. I blessed it and I ate it. I said, last time I ate some shrimp or some gumbo. And I did not have any mud bugs. I saw them eating them crayfish, crawfish, whatever you want to call them. And, 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 hey, judging, I felt just as bad eating that little uh, water roach. But them crayfish have mercy. Uh, but I digress. I'm glad they didn't set those down before me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, I'm saying that to say, uh, again, it's not about, you know, yeah, deny your flesh. Let that be your bottom line. If your flesh want to go over there and eat up everything, you don't need to go. You call them. <laughs> no, but I guarantee you, you're going to wish you had seen certain folks' faces by the time the inauguration takes place. I guarantee you. I believe uh, we're headed for some very tumultuous times on earth as it is in heaven. Here on the ground and in the skies above. And we won't be dismayed either way. We'll be wise as serpents, be gentle as doves, and always operate in 1 Corinthians 13 love. Remember, there's no bondage in love. Love is not conditional. I love you if you believe like I believe. I love you if you 
do what I want you to do. Why is this important? Because it's almost over. And I, you know, I have this strange feeling. I've been listening to the news and I've been hearing them say, oh, more people than ever are traveling this holiday. More people than ever doing this, doing that, blah, blah, blah. You hear that sometimes, and I think they say that to geek your mind up and make you think, oh, well, I need to get out there too. I, I, ain't, I ain't been out there yet too. You know, they, they play off our minds like that. But I'm, but I'm noticing something. And, you know, again, I don't have no tree. I don't want no tree. I don't have no reef. I don't have no lights. I have no, none of that. But I'm not scared to go nowhere where they do. And, and I'm not going to be offended to go anywhere where they do. If I know in my heart of hearts that God wants me to go there. If I know in my heart of hearts that it's part of the commandment that Jesus Christ left as the most important. To love thy neighbor as thyself. And I keep foremost in my mind who is my mother and who is my brother. But at the same time too, you don't use that as an excuse to make you neglect your mother and your brother. Jesus Christ was busy at work when he said, who was my mother and who was my brother? You have to remember, one of the disciples was his brother that rolled with him. So he did not neglect his loved ones. And, you know, I've, I've brought this to you in part in several messages now because I feel it is very important. It is a mistake I made growing up that I don't want y'all to make especially on this, which may be your last chance to dance. I don't mean that literally. I mean, this may be the last chance that folks will have to gather together. And again, because resources are provided during this time of year for people to get more time off from work or to have some vacation bonus, excuse me, to have some holiday bonus money or some time for vacation. And again, perfect world, it wouldn't be because of this time of year, which, you know, yeah, we know the switcheroo in the name. It's lots of switcheroo action going on. I'm trying to tell you. The most illest experience I ever had. When I was not a believer, even on this level in the Lord. Okay, I just I knew it was a God. And I believed it was a Jesus. But I didn't know how it all worked out or, or fit together. I did not believe none of the pagan things at all. Still don't. However, the very first experience I had with someone who had an extra dimensional entity dominating them at the time was on Christmas and I always thought that was ill and ironic especially because at that time I was firmly in my anti-Christmas mindset and the Lord had that experience happen on a day that I thought was just another day nothing special in any kind of way now if the pagans chose Saturnalia during a particular time and if everything that the adversary does is a copy of something that the father does then first you have Days and time in which the Father is pouring out more spiritual energy for us to access or more uh, merriment or whatever, you know, Mary Hart does the body good like the medicine. The different seasons and different reasons the Lord causes certain things to spring up in one season and not in another. From things that we eat to the animals that are present, the insects that are present and to the flowers that are pleasant. So this season was intended for something. The adversary hijacked this season, like he hijacks everything. He did not create. And we don't know what it was meant to be. Some of us may, <laughs> by the Holy Spirit, you just may, okay? But I believe that we may have been tricked on this one too. But again, I'm not, uh, not, not, not. celebrate the tradition. Celebrate your loved ones by showing them that you love them, by showing them that Despite your differences or your misunderstandings, no matter what happens, the world may turn upside down, you still down. With them, not the tradition. And, and, and you know, there's some very practical reasons why you may want to do that. Right now, during this season. Okay, this ain't the season to shun everybody. There's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. And it's going to be a lot of confusion in the air. And for some folks, not everybody, but for some folks, when things get too confusing and convoluted, they like to go back to home base. They like to go back to the beginning. So, okay, let me sort this out. They like to be around people that they know 
as that know them. People that they feel like, hey, if it come down to some warfare, they'll be on my side. Strength in numbers. Iron sharpens iron. And a good shepherd will leave the flock for even one lost sheep. So now, that being said, I hope that this is properly lined up in your head. I hope that it's properly lined up that yes, turn from or separate from the traditions and the customs. But we don't separate from or turn from the people who are lost because of them. And I think that's a timely word. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 10 and 7, and I hope that that's a little more clear. I hope. My prayer is that. But let's end here with 1 Corinthians 10 and 7. Let's not be so heavenly bound that we're no earthly good that we think we're doing great lofty things when we're doing a small thing that's really self-serving and there's a much more difficult and more challenging thing that we could be doing to help God's children the lost first and foremost according to what Messiah said let's, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 7. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for in, for in samples or examples. And they are written for our admonition, for our instruction, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Be sure you really stand it now. It's good to have some backup. There hath no temptation taken wherever two or more. Yeah. How can Two come together except they agree? Why can two walk together except they agree? <coughs> Excuse me. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, pay attention, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. It's common to man to make these errors and mistakes. Especially because it is popular now to mankind in the information age to have hidden information, to have information about things that at the end of the day, it plays on your pride. And it can make you feel as if, well, I know something you don't know. And it can make you also feel as if, well, you know, because I know this, I shouldn't be associating with them. You know, I'm telling you, those things, you know, that proper and prim spirit and all that lofty-minded spirits and religious spirits, those things can jump on to you because of intellect, which is what adversary used from the very beginning, along with divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. Do you see this? Intellectualism and division, creating a perfect world for the adversary, if you will. So the adversary used divide and conquer. He split up Adam and Eve, but most importantly, he used intelligence. He told them, he said that, you know, you will become as gods. You will know as they know. Your eyes will be open. So the devil is using the apple of today. Although we know there was no apple in the story, of course. But you, you overstand. The adversary is using the apple of today or the computers of today to get people to take a bite of this forbidden knowledge and then to believe that their eyes are opened. Huh? And now that they too are not on the same status as the average bear. We've talked about this a number of times. Let's, let's, let's continue. Because see, this is a warning against forfeiting your liberty in chapter 10. 
giving up your freedom from the bondage that mankind has gone through for millennia, largely because of the misinterpretation of the priesthood. Going all the way back, as far as we can go, so Jesus gave us freedom from that. He knew that those things had become tainted because it was evidenced by the ways of the people. Let's continue. So know that there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. It's common to man to fall to that temptation. Man wants to be wise. Man wants intellect. Man wants to know something another man does not. It's why secret societies are full of members. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Won't give you more to deal with than you can deal with. The challenge that he's giving you is one that you can overcome. You separate your mouth from your thumb. And quit baby bearing. It's time to get on Papa Bear status now. The time is at hand. Lots at stake. Lots of brothers and sisters at stake. Who need somebody to reach out to them. Where they are. Let's see. It says, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So even in that challenge, again, if the challenge is one of temptation, mm -hmm, the Lord will give you a way out. Okay? To where he won't lead you to where you won't be able to escape temptation. Or to where you won't be able to pass that test. He doesn't put you in a test that you're not meant to pass. And he doesn't put you on a battlefield that you're not meant to conquer on. If he puts you there, he puts you there meaning for you to conquer. As it is in your heritage to do. So use your liberty to glorify God. The freedom that you have. Glorify God wherever you go. Glorify God in the midst of the people. But walk in the way that shows the way. Let people be able to look at you and let your walk and the way that you treat them, teach them. Does that make sense? And, and, and uh, just, just to bring that home, let's look at chapter 10. Let's go back. Let's look at verse 1 and come down a little bit. It says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Okay, they were all under the mighty cloud that the father rode with the Israelites with. They all went through the Red Sea when it was split and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. With them from the beginning, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. But see, they kept making a personification of a God. They needed to, to see and feel. You know, mankind is a very visual creature, a very sentient creature. We want to touch it, we want to hear it, we want to see it. It's what makes folks have such a hard time believing in and following and obeying God. But God gave us a remedy for that. He made himself manifest in the flesh as his own word living and walking among mankind. And it was recorded. And that was to show us the way he meant for us to walk as Adam. From the very beginning. And it was to show us the freedom that he meant for us to have. As being made in his image and likeness. He is free. But we're also to be wise. Make wise choices.
and keep our bodies under subjection. It's what makes fasting so important. It's what makes the holidays such a dangerous time, you know, among the ways that it can compromise the spirit of one who is unguarded. It can compromise the body of one who is unguarded or easily tempted or swayed. Again, part of a fast is to abstain without looking like you're abstaining, without even letting it be known that you're abstaining. Because then you get your reward from folks commenting on how sweet it is that you fast. But now, Jesus Christ came in the flesh, showed us how to die to the flesh, how to be in the world and not of the world. And how as a great physician, you still have to walk among the sick. Now, isn't that something? As perfect as he was, he showed us that he meant, you know, again, this is God giving us the example in the flesh, the personification that we needed. He showed that, that hey, you know, I mean for you to touch the people. I mean for you to get out among the people and deal with the lost. As much as it is in your power to do. So now, that being said, stay out of the bondage of tradition. Oh, we're not going to have no lights up? I don't believe it. You don't need them. And stay out of the bondage of fear of tradition. Or feeling as if being around tradition is something that's powerful enough to take away from you what your loving God gave you if your intention is to be around it to help those who are lost. If for no other reason but to show them love, that helps people. Or to offer some wise counsel, that helps people. To share some of your wisdom and understanding, not just your knowledge, that helps people. And with that, we're gonna go ahead. And next up will be the news. Uh, then following that will be Say Hi to the Bad Guy 2, the Trump card. And uh, there's a lot going on in the news. I have a long list of things to touch on. And um, I think I'm just going to save that for that. But yeah, so again, being in the world and not of the world, it's a difficult thing. It's much more comfortable, you would say. And, and, you know, again, we're told uh, by the Lord to be ye hot or cold. You were lukewarm, so I spat you out. You remain hot. Stay hot for the Lord. Okay? But be hot in the world and around the people that need that warmth. Don't just preach to the choir. Don't just preach to the mirror. Get out among the people and the Lord will give you the words and the opportunities to serve them. If you're willing, you have to be willing. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman, not going to make you. But if you're willing to put your hand to the plow, the Lord will give you work to do right now. Especially when there are so many folks who don't know how to be in the world and of the world and go and be around in relics and stuff and you know, not be uh, carried away. Not be there for the tradition, but be there for the lost, for the people, for the loved ones that have been blinded by it. And do it because it's the hard thing to do. And that's what the Father would want of us. Yes, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. But he also sends his light into dark places. Who makes a candle to be hid up under a bed or in a bushel? You are like a bright and shining city that should be set upon a hill. So folks can come and receive what it is the Father has blessed you so graciously with. And with that being said, I, 
I love you all now. I know it's folks trying to reach me by email. Uh, it is so jam packed. I know you, I know I have erased 2000 emails. And usually after I erase about 3 or 4, 3 or 4 new ones come up. Now I know it's not been a thousand jammed up since the last time I got one. Okay, which has been about 4 or 5 days now. So I will say for now continue Please continue to send the emails, and I'm continuing to make space, and they should pop up. That's the way it's always happening. This ain't nothing new. It's happened before, okay? But it ain't happening this time like it happened last time. So but that's okay. No big deal on that. And I, uh, uh, I thank everyone who has tuned in, and I thank everyone who supports this ministry, who encourages uh, and prays for this ministry. And again, we will be right back very soon, this weekend, with the news installment and then following that, the Trump card. So I thank you again for tuning in. I thank you for uh, your time and your patience with this lesson because I know that it can be uh, a challenging thing or a difficult thing. It is much simpler to say, well, I'm all in or I'm all out than it is to say, well, you know what? I'm all out, but I'm still going in. I'm going in because you have to go in. It's what we do, like the Marines. So, and, and but again, our weapons are not carnal, so we don't come in kicking in doors. We come in with smiles and handshakes and love. Yeah, we do. And break the devil's back with that. Believe it. So keep making him mad. Keep making the father glad. And I love you. And. Pray for all who are depressed during this time, folks who have had losses, uh, and the holidays may bring back to remembrance loved ones that they lost. Pre please pray for those folks and keep them in your hearts and minds. And please also pray for all of those folks who are depressed and stressed just because they don't have the ability to join in with this, and they want to. We do not want to join in. Do you understand that? Okay. We go in. We don't join in. We go in like the military. Okay. You have to step in them places and spaces with the power that the Father gave you. All powerful power of love. First Corinthians love and the comfort of the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Breaks everything down. Okay? Breaks everything down. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, but it's a lot of folks who are really uh, depressed and down during this time of year. And, and you know, I, you shouldn't be. But I know it's a lot of pressure on people. Buy this and buy that. And folks want more, and there's no more money. <laughs> Being being uh, uh, handed out in a lot of folks' lives, but folks is expecting more. So, you know, pray for, pray for folks to be free from that bondage. That's a bondage. That's a bondage. And that's one of the reasons why those of us who abstain from jumping into or joining in with the traditions of this season do so. Because of that. It makes so many good people feel bad and break themselves. But again, it's a it's a time to be on the scene. It's a time to be available. It's a time to help talk to those folks and you know help them to see the light. Okay, that that ain't what it's all about. Okay, and, and you know we go through stages. Sometimes it takes an extreme. Okay, I had to go extreme to get broken out of this thing. Okay, and it took me many years of just being extremely anti to come around and see where you're supposed to be with it. I'm extremely anti in my soul concerning all things pagan and all things twisted that our father uh, was set down here to be one way and the adversary turned around another way. It grieves my spirit. But I'm also not Oblivious, like Jesus Christ was not oblivious to people's pain. 
when the men caught up that woman there before Jesus wrote in the sand. Their symbol was a black dragon. And they went on ahead, feeling accused. Jesus Christ did not take that opportunity to admonish that woman in front of those people. He took that opportunity to see that she was hurting and she needed love. A lot of folks, a whole lot of folks, I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I hate to tell you this, but a whole lot of folks get geeked during this time of year. It's sad because the rest of the year they mad. The rest of the year they don't feel good. The rest of the year, you know, they're depressed about things. It's fake because it shouldn't take this. It shouldn't take a certain time of year to be of good cheer and have a merry heart do things for people and, and to see your loved ones, to sup with them, to take time off and spend time with them. But the time is short, so now's the time that you have to do it. So I would take it if I was you. It's almost over. Making America great again is going to mean something very sinister. But with that being said, I'm going to go on ahead. I love you all. And again, keep the emails coming. All right. Um, and oh, talk to me through the comment section. Okay. I figured out how to get back in there. I'll tell you, I was locked out of everything then. But um, yes, you can talk to me through the comment section. Uh, I'm going to jump in there. All right. By the time you hear this, I'll be in there. And. Um, be good to each other. Obey the Father. Shalom. Now again, until we get the email back in shape, okay, you can send your emails. I believe they're going to come through once enough emails are erased, however many that has to be, or whatever. But you can also uh, YouTube message me especially if you have a private concern or a private matter that you would like to uh, receive prayer concerning. Just write me in the YouTube message. I bet you I'll check it this time. And then also feel free to write whatever you want to say in the comments section, okay? And I just wanted to reiterate that and, and that uh, the uh, uh, PayPal address is still the same to sew for those who feel so led to sew. But again, if you're trying to reach me by email, for now, the best bet is to leave a comment in the comment section, or if it is a sensitive matter, go ahead and leave it in the YouTube messaging, okay? God bless you. Peace.